computer. Okay, recordings in progress. So welcome again, everyone. We're reading again from Sankarpa Kamudi, trying to understand the wonderful philosophy of love or the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. And um, we are continuing. Everyone can hear me okay, I, um, I presume. It should be, my mute's not on. Yeah, yes, we can. Okay, very good. So um, we are starting a new chapter. Uh, but before we do that, let me just share my screen with these slides I have on this. So I should have got all this prepared before I was running a bit late. Um, okay, we're there. Okay, ready, we're there. So this is chapter eight, page 133. For those of you who have the copy there, and um, it's entitled Questioning the Definition Further. So the last chapter was Circular Causality. And the basic principle of that is trying to understand how and in what way the activities of sadhana which is done using the material body can evoke something spiritual like bhava in what way that happens and it's a little bit technical and this chapter is even more technical <laughs> but it's a relatively short chapter actually the chapters are it's really nicely how maharaj has done it that the chap none no chapters are long and it's split up into very into relatively small chapters for our further understanding so um let's bear with it let's see how or let's see the best let's read and let's see what we can understand here um all right so anyone uh, let's offer some prayers to shula Prabhupada, number on vishnu badaya krishna stay with the lake she mati bhakti varanta swanti namine namaste sarasati devi gauravani vacharine nivasi shasunyavadi prashtatara satani right so if devotees who like to read uh you can raise your hand and um but otherwise if devotees have questions best to unmute and and ask because i get confused whether your hands up for reading or your hands up for a question so if you do have a question, please feel free to unmute and you can ask or something or some clarification. And just a quick note as well, if um, I think Chandravali Mother sent you a message. If um, I spoke to a devotee in charge of a shop here and she's willing to fast track some copies of Sudha Bhakti Chintama, um, Sankalva Kumudi, excuse me. So if anyone does, doesn't have a copy and I do want to get a copy, then please, you can let us know. And then we can give a number of books that they will order. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, How much is it, Prabhu? How much will it cost? Um, good question. Anyone know the press out there? It's Prabhu, it's 40 pounds. 40 pounds, there you go. Yep. So the shop might be, you know, Shops are shops, <laughs> you've got to make profit. <laughs> so they might put it, yeah, it's a little bit expensive, but it's, if there's something worth spending 40 pound on, it's definitely something like this, you know. All right, so you can let us know. Okay, so let's dive in. So we have Anu Palma had a hand up raised there first, so you can begin. Reading page 133. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Eight, questioning the definition further. Reading chapters six and seven, a subtle reader may have further questions regarding the definition of sadhana. While the logic of circular causality gives one perspective on how physical activities in time and space transform into transcendental devotion, there are other perspectives. To provide a comprehensive view of the definition of sadhana bhakti, this chapter raises further relevant questions and then answers them. 
used. While part of this procedure may be a repetition of earlier material, the format of this presentation will offer a more systematic perspective of sadhana bhakti. In that way, we hope to assist the reader's access to the primary objective of this book, the determination to achieve love. Here again, the definition of sadhana bhakti. When transcendental devotional service by which love for Krishna is attained is executed by the senses, it is called sadhana bhakti or the regulative discharge of devotional service. Such devotion eternally exists within the heart of every living entity. The awakening of this eternal devotion is the potentiality of devotional service in practice. The two pivotal words above are sadhana and sorry, sadhya and sadhana, the goal and the means to attain it, the prayojana and the abhidya, the goal of life and functional duties. Rupa Goswami's definition makes clear that this goal is bhava bhakti and that bhava bhakti exists eternally, is eternally perfect and is only awakened within the heart by sadhana, not created by it. The process of sadhana bhakti is also described as those syst systematic and regulative activities of the senses that enable the potentiality of bhav to manifest in the practitioner. A wonder of sadhana bhakti is that it achieves this purpose by emulating the sensual activities by which bhava expresses itself, such as speaking about Krishna. In this way, bhakti manifests through the senses and gives rise to bhakti within the heart, thus remaining consistent with the principle of bhaktiya, sajitya, bhaktiya, bhakti gives rise to bhakti. Commentators on bhakti Rasamitra Sindhu, like Jiva Goswami and Chatravarti Thakur, raise and answer certain objections that the analytical mind may propose, sorry, may pose in response to Rupa Goswami's definition. Those and other arguments now follow. Okay, could just pause there. You can continue okay. reading Anupama, but I just want to okay. highlight some points which um, what is going to be discussed here. You see, this is the definition that um, is often given by Rupa Goswami, Kuchi Satya Bhavad Satya. Now, what's being questioned here and what has been questioned before and is being further questioned here for further understanding it's this section, when transcendental devotional service by which love for Krishna is attained is, is executed by the senses. Yeah. Now the senses yeah. are, are material. So reading this, it gives you a sense that the more you, you engage your senses in Krishna's service, that will give rise to bhava. But there's an important aspect which is not mentioned. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you what that is. That's going to come up. But that's the um, questioning, or, or that is what is being questioned for, for, for further clarification. Because it already exists eternally within the heart. So it's the definition of this awakening. How does it actually awaken? So, because I, I was just before. Before we start today, I was just reading through this chapter again and trying to follow the logic and understanding to kind of help us as a group to understand what's being spoken or asked. Okay. So, like this point here, it is it is awakened within the heart. It is not created by it. Bhava is awakened. It's not created. So, simple point, but Maharaj brings up some interesting questions which some someone may ask yeah. all right so okay. it helps to know where um, we're going it helps to know where we're going isn't it like yesterday i was going to south london and um i didn't have a sat navigation i was completely bewildered <laughs> <laughs> but then i managed to find some map a map on my phone and then oh now i know where i'm going where i am and where i'm going it definitely helps but in this study, it, it helps. All right. So, if there's unless there's any questions on that or continue, continue reading. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Yeah, please, Nimai Mata. Yeah. Uh, Prabhu, it, this is 
uh, this is creating the, your inquisitiveness, uh, the way yes. you mentioned so much. Oh, uh, uh, I was just thinking, Prabhu, anyway, you were going to say it, but I was just thinking, it's like, um, uh, spot, it's an awakening of this eternal devotion. So are we talking about the spontaneous? Bhava, we're, we're, we're speaking about Bhava here, which is further addition, yeah, Bhava is, uh, will be spontaneous. You're inspired by the feelings of love. Hmm. That, that's uh, Bhava. Yeah. So, yeah, what we're speaking about, as Marge will continue to say, is we're speaking about how the eternal devotional principles interact with matter. Oh, okay. Yeah. We are a soul, and we have matter to use to engage in Krishna's service, which which actually means the body. But it's not. Again, it's not something material. It's a spiritual principle which doesn't work on the same laws as material. So it's, for instance, if you want to earn extra money, then you work overtime, you work night shifts, and you work double time. Then you get extra money. <laughs> so, but spiritual life is not exactly like that. Although it's expressed Bhava arises from the practice of sadhana. It's arising hasn't got, isn't, is not just dependent on what we do. There's a spiritual principle behind it. Some of you might guess what the other part is, but let's see. And if you don't get to today, I shall give it away. <laughs> All right. I was thinking. I was thinking it's like engaging in material senses in performing devotional service, they will automatically get spiritualized according to how we put the iron rod in the fire. Yes, yeah, so and then iron rod on fire. Yeah. Does that that, make, is that how we're going? Yeah, that is. I'm just correct, thinking ahead. That's correct. But Marge is giving a, a further definition to actually understand what's happening there because that's quite material mm -hmm. no you in, of course it's a material example but yeah. what is it that is given rise to bhav is not at all mechanical it's guru's mercy in essence it is krishna's swarup shakti yeah in essence, <laughs> it's, it's krishna's swarup shakti because i guess i've gone so far i can just there's a part which goes which we come to today I'm just, it's, it says, um, no matter how good the sadhana, no matter how qualified the sadhaka, bhava bhakti is independent of both. Mm -hmm. yeah? it's, it, is, it, it, it is independent of both. Efforts, efforts do not occasion its appearance. So I was, I was, so I was reading this today, I was thinking, so, so why should we make the effort? <laughs> if it does, no. But Bhava Bhakti appears by the agencies of the potencies of divine cognizance and pleasure. So that's Krishna's Rup Shakti. So it's the mercy of the Lord that causes the appearance of Bhava. But it's an interesting discussion and and um, uh, and analysis because once we understand this, why we're doing our sadhana, we can develop this desire. Or yeah, for Krishna's grace on the mercy. Do you understand? Where well, it's not just <clears throat> things we do, but it's the mood that we do it in that actually gives rise to Baba. Yeah. Yes, oh. it's like um, can, like the Damodar Lila, mercy and uh, yeah, and very Dabba. good. Yeah, Damodar, it's your Mavi Soda, and it and 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 she could still be trying to turn trying to uh, tie up Krishna now, <laughs> no how hard she tried. That's a very good example. It's a, yeah, actually very good. It, this is this is what this discussion is. Yeah, she, it was only by Krishna when when uh, he wished it would happen, then it then it happened. Uh, that's why that's why spiritual life can sometimes be a bit of a 
mystery because a lot of devotees they conclude they've been so much for so many years and doing this yeah. and doing that and still the goal seems quite quite elusive because it's not it's not material it's not the material thing it's yeah. not like putting in a certain amount of hours then you get a certain amount of wages back you know i've done so many back <laughs> it's it's not it's it's a different principle so that should invoke a mood of dependence upon Kripa. You know? Anyway, let's read on. We can hear more. Okay. okay, Anupama, I did promise you could read some more. Yeah, you want to carry on, Anupama? Are you still with us? Oh. She's gone to get a cup of tea. <laughs> okay, anyone else like to read? Kurumai. I see your hand there. Can you hear me? Kurumai? You have to unmute if you can. Or actually, do you have the book? I guess those who have their hands up must have the book. Kurumai, can you hear us? We can't hear you. You must be muted. Okay, let's come back to Kunamai after. Um, Sahachari Mother, you could read. Oh, is it me? I can't hear Sahachari either. Can someone unmute and tell me if they can hear me? Well, I can't. I can't hear anyone going on Hare Krishna I don't know what's happened here um, my sound is gone my mute is I'm in the chat here we can hear but you can't hear us okay why can't I hear you okay Hare Krishna you can hear each other as well, but I can't hear. I've been locked out. Okay, what I'm going to have to do is, um, it's a shame, it's valuable time going. Let me just um, come out. Let me just come out of this and start again. That means you're gonna, if I stop this meeting, then you're going to all have to um, rejoin. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Okay, can anyone hear me? Okay, I can't hear you. That's the problem, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to have to stop the meeting and we'll try again, yeah? I'm going to press end meeting. Then we have to all rejoin, okay? Okay, end meeting. Okay. Recording progress. Okay. Okay. Shall I start now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A devotee who contemplates the definition of bhakti and sadhana bhakti may wonder about the relationship of these spiritual practices with the material body and therefore ask, bhakti has already been defined as an eternal and transcendental potency of Krishna. How can then activities of the material senses that are performed in time and space qualify as a bhakti? This question expresses the standard paradox that goes back to the Western philosophy of Satisan dualism, which first defined what it, what it called the mind-body problem. It is an enigma that challenges philosophies who still cannot unravel how trans transcendence can interact with the temporal. However, the Bhagavad Gita and Krishna's acharyas has addressed the questions in millennia past. We answer in the following way. We've already explained that bhakti received from the guru to the seed of the creeper of devotion transforms activities into bhakti. Additionally, 
Additionally, Acharya uh, argue that rudimentary activities like collecting wood and other ingredients for a yagna, while different from rituals like chanting, mantras, and pouring oblations, are also indispensable aspects of a fire sacrifice and so are part of it. Similarly, because they lead to bhava and prema, the activities of sadhana, although different from transcendental devotion, are considered bhakti. Wanting further clarification to his question, a person may respond. In the definition, the word bhav is referred to with words like sadhya, acquired, and sadhyata, the state of being attained or the state of being manifested. The implication is that sadhana actually produces bhava, which is contradictory to bhava's eternal nature as described by the phrase nitya siddhyasya. How is this? incongruity result. Okay, a valid just pause there. Robert. Um, so can okay. I just further ask him the question? Yeah, and he's bringing up the, 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 the language which is often expressed in, it gives the, or uh, it implies that sadhana produces bhava. Yeah, which is contradictory. So Marge is just further asking the same question before he well, we've already actually mentioned how how it will be answered, but he's just he's just asking more of the same question. So, hope that's clear. Yeah. Often he does that. He will answer. He will pre present the question from many angles. You know. Yeah. All right. So okay. perhaps, um, perhaps someone else would like to read. Um, I think. Uh, I read. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Wanting further clarification to his question, a person may respond. In the, defi def in the definition, the word power is referred to. I think we read that, Marvin. We just we go read down. That. Yeah, just go down and. A valid yeah. inquiry? Yeah, correct. Yeah. A valid inquiry indeed. One that highlights the complexities and challenges involved in communicating spiritual dynamics with the limitations of language. Again, we answer, sadhana does not cause bhav. Rather, sadhana qualifies a practitioner, purifies his heart, and awakens feelings of intense hankering for bhav. But it is not the cause, it is the catalyst. Due to the limitations of language, however, we express ourselves by saying that the catalyst, sadhana, manifest bow. A fire is not caused by spark from striking, striking together two pieces of flint. Fire is already latent within the firewood. The spark merely initiates a condition in which the dormant fire is manifest or attained. It is same with the effect of sadhana or bow. Not satisfied with the above answer, a reader may think, Still, the wording of the definition gives impression that sadhana creates bow. A definition must be concise and cannot immediately address every question related to it. This difficulty is further complicated when the defin definition is given in the precise spiritual language of Sanskrit and translated into the temporal English. In the light of this, we shall do our best to answer this query. The wording is precise and ambiguous. Rupa Goswami says that bow is nitya siddha, eternally existent or eternally accomplished. Moreover, he says praktyam ridi, that is that it is awkward within the heart. Does the proper contact awakened. Con awakened within the heart? It is awakened within the heart. Okay. Does the proper contact, contextual understanding of sadhya and sadhyata is Srila Prabhupada's use of the word potentiality, which makes clear that sadhana simply uncovers that which is already present in its fullness. In order to clarify, Srila Prabhupada gives a clear example. The walking capacity is within every child. 
and by practice, a child learns to walk. The action of learning to crawl and balance and repeatedly standing and falling do not themselves give a child the ability to walk. They simply extract the walking potential. Were that potential not there, for example, were the child handicapped, then no amount of effort would make walking possible. Chakravati Thakur gives another example. Krishna takes birth in the prison of Kams, but that does not mean that Krishna does not, did not exist before his birth. Indeed, we know that Krishna is eternal. So it is with Bhav Bhakti. In conclusion, as, as will be seen in the following chapter, the role of Sadhana Bhakti is even more passive then its definition first conveys, no matter how good the sadhana, no matter how qualified the sadhaka, Bhava Bhakti is independent of pose. Efforts do not occasion its appearance. Bhava Bhakti appears by the agency of the potencies of divine cognizance and pleasure. By Krishna's Swarup Sakti, it is the mercy of the Lord that is the cause of the appearance of Bhav. Citing Lord Brahma, Gopinath Acharya explained to Sarva Bhuma Bhattacharya that ultimately Krishna can be known only by his mercy. There is no other way. My Lord, if one is favored by even a slight trace of the mercy of your lotus feet, he can understand the greatness of your personality. But those who speculate in order to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead are unable to know you, even though they continue to study the Vedas for many years. Having Hare Krishna. Oh. My sound is, um, I can't hear anyone again. Something's happened. My sound is maybe one second. Hare Krishna. Hey, Paul. Sorry about that. Having pro technical problems today. It keeps on jumping onto my iPods for some reason. But anyway, perhaps we're just pause there. Okay. And, uh, let's try and it, try and grasp what's being said. Uh, Marge is just emphasizing this same point and giving many different examples. Uh, this principle that we are not by our own efforts cre uh, or creating Baba. Yeah. And this example from the nectar of devotion is given that a child in inherently has the ability to walk. Mm. Yeah. It's not, and I think I gave the example if you try and teach a dog to walk on two legs, it'd be very difficult because that innate capacity to walk on two legs it is not there in a four-legged animal yeah mm. all right so this again this is just highlighting is highlighting the dependence on krishna's surup shakti or the dependence on krishna guru and krishna's mercy yeah in coming to the stage of Baba or coming to the beginning stage of, of a love. Right? Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Yeah. Prabhu, is it, it is Maharaj is explaining uh, if we don't have mercy, it is just like we are handicapped? No, he's not. I mean, he used that word. I mean, you could, I mean, you could say that. No, it, actually, you couldn't. Maharaj, that's not the context. Hmm. But it's not the same context because handicap means that the um, that the ability to walk is actually not actually there. That means one is handicapped. But every jiva, every jiva has the potentiality to come to or to um, develop love for Krishna. 
every jiva has that possibility even in the animal species <laughs> even without mercy oh because that 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 is what mercy is it means that's this is the point okay it's it's by mercy that one can develop. It's by it's what we said here. Atapa deva pajampa do praya prashad lesson great the he the he. One slight trace of Krishna's grace can enable one to obtain love. Yeah. Can I can I ask you in in can I tell you in what I can understand? Like yeah, say. Yeah. Like I'm just thinking to myself, like water has has got liquidity, right? So its yeah. potency is liquid. So like sugar is sweet. That's what it is, right? So we um, conditioned souls have already got devotion, but it would be awakened by the mercy. Does that make sense? Yeah, because we're all parts and parcels of the Lord. So our constitutional position is one of being eternally devoted to the Lord. Lord, yeah. yeah. And it's nice you gave that example because Prabhupada gave that example in the morning walk in London. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. Yeah, he was walking with his cane and he was prodding the ice. He was asking devotees, what does this mean? And of course, no one could really <laughs> understand. No one could understand what he actually meant. You know, then Prabhupada says, yes, actually it's original constitutional position is to be liquid Hare krishna we can't hear you no one can't hear me no no i can hear you yeah, we can, we hear, can you. hear you yeah we can, yeah, hear, we can you. hear you clearly i can hear as well okay so yeah. Yeah. Mur murli prabhu can i ask you a question as well yeah Go yeah there. you know yeah about the mercy i think on fact uh, yesterday we heard a class from buddha bhavna and he was saying that uh, it's from devotees you know, if we serve devotees, we get mercy. So what? how does that apply in this situation? Well, that, well, that is... The, does that apply the, as well? Yeah, is that devotees are generally the um, via mediums by which Krishna's mercy flows. Mm -hmm. It flows through his representatives. So by pleasing the devotees then we are pleasing Krishna. It can come directly from Krishna as well. It can come directly from the holy name as well. It can come from a variety of ways, directly from Krishna, from the devotees of the Lord, or it can come by the holy name. Okay, yeah, that thank you. But the point that's being made here is that just so we understand this, it's not a material principle. You know, by engaging our senses and doing what we're not going to invoke, we are not going to develop Baba by our own efforts. Baba is already there, but it acts like a sudden, acts like a catalyst to actually bring it out. Mm -hmm. It's quite a. Um, Detailed subject, but all right. Um, yes, thank you. Any more I, ask, uh, yeah. I just have a question quickly. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can. Yeah, you hear um, I was just thinking, like it says here, like sadhana um, doesn't really um, like back, Baba Bhakti is not going to happen because of your sadhana, and I was just thinking, like when we. Um, at the end of the prayer, when we say the 10 offenses, we say in order to quickly achieve the desired success, which is Krishna Prem. Mm -hmm. So that makes me think like our chanting, if we do it without offenses, will occasion Krishna Prem. Mm -hmm. um, how is that? Was that sadhana, isn't it? Yeah, but actually it is sadhana, but it's not just by dint of our own effort. It's by Krishna's grace upon us. But sometimes we experience, no matter how hard you try, you may, you know, really try your best to concentrate on the holy name, but then you may not feel, you may not feel specifically so much reciprocation. Yeah. No, you're doing your best on your part, 
Yeah. But it, it actually is up to Krishna. That's why the example we give is of a young Narod. You know, when he meditated and he and Krishna appeared on the lotus of his heart, fully manifest, he became overwhelmed with, with, with great ecstasy. And then that vision went. And Narod tried to do the same thing, you know, sat in the same place, did the same pranayam before, yeah. meditated. But it, yeah. so the same when as sadhana, you know, you can be doing the same thing. You can be doing your same thing. And then one day you'll do the same thing and you feel a great surge of grace and mercy. Hmm. Same thing you was doing yesterday. The same thing you was doing last week. And the same thing. And that's Krishna's grace that's krishna's mercy but then the next day you may oh great no let me then the next day let me do the same thing then oh, <laughs> it doesn't happen <laughs> <laughs> because it's all krishna's Prabhu, is it, can i uh, say something? yeah Prabhu, sometimes Prabhu, when you let go and i remember a sri vrindavan Prabhu always speaks bhakti breeds bhakti yeah we've been reading yeah. that yeah and he says uh let letting go bhakti. bhakti breeds and letting go sometimes when you let go and when you uh, when you just concentrate on your chanting and uh, even don't think okay you just let go you just chant hearing sometimes uh, it is more more peaceful but when you try okay i'm doing chanting you endeavor endeavor sometimes nothing happens yeah, this is actually we're having this conversation because it kind of highlights yeah. what we're discussing here. Yeah. We may, no matter what we we may try and do, we should always feel dependent upon the Lord. Mm. Ultimately, mm. dependent upon the devotees and the Lord, because that's what makes it a a spiritual, or that's what makes it spiritual as opposed to material. No. it's because Krishna is a person and actually only Prema can actually control him can actually control him fully yeah so dad will take it yeah you need to mute so you need to Priya mother sorry sorry okay. yeah but that's um yeah this uh, I mean we all this is something we experience every day that's something we all share in our spiritual practice is that we all chant japa mm. none of you have been chanting rounds for, for like many many years and you have many different experiences you know? i remember sometimes i one time i chanted 64 rounds and i'm kind of it's like <laughs> like all right i chanted 64 rounds but i wasn't feeling much you know devotion i was kind of it was it was tough but i but but i did it then the last round round number 64 Mm. I, felt, I felt some it felt like what i translated as some reciprocation only mm. because uh, I, i'm trying to analyze it at that stage at the last round i kind of did what you I don't know if you meaning this time but i kind of wasn't demanding from krishna i kind of relaxed a bit yeah you let go i was yes. kind of let go that like okay number 64 my my mentality so this is so spiritual life is very subtle and um krishna for his own good reasons is not going to reciprocate in the way that we expect every time mm. but what he's but what he's doing there he he is internally preparing our internal meditation for actually receiving the ultimate gift of uh, love Mm. and it's not it's not going to become by again it's not by paying a certain amount of money or given yeah it's not can by, we say he's testing our patience Prabhu <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's uh, bringing out your devotion devotion yeah it's so like you, normal out, you say, don't test my patience yeah. you know Prabhu sometimes when you talk in normal words you say don't test my patience so yeah. but this way he is bringing our devotion uh, and allowing us to endeavor more and more and more yeah okay. and that's also uh, this exemplified this is um, a question that the gopis ask krishna 
after he disappears from the Rasalila. Mm. Then Krishna comes back on the scene again, and it's um, called the, re the Reunion. Beautiful chapter, how Krishna appears in the midst of the gopis after their ardent desire and you know, um, being absorbed in, in acting his pastimes. Then he appears in their mists. Then the gopis ask him these questions. You know, why is, why is it that you don't seem to reciprocate? And this whole discussion on, on how Krishna reciprocates. And, then, and, and an example is given there is the example that Krishna, or, yeah, Krishna gives. It's just like a, a, a poor person who suddenly comes into wealth and then he loses that wealth. He cannot but think of that wealth again and again and again. You know, so when by our daily activities we experience grace, we experience mercy sometimes, and then so so, and then Krishna is very expert that he that that like he withdraws. So then we treasure that, and we don't take it for granted. And it's something that we treasure. Hmm. Yeah, it's not. Um, again, I keep bringing this, saying this point. It's not something material so that's why Marjorie is addressing this in in the language of this verse pretty you know by practicing sadhana you're going to get baba but but there's more to it than that and this is what Maharaj has got into that verse and he's unpacking it what's actually happening there when, yeah don't you think that sometimes uh, Krishna doesn't feel sorry for us? We all are trying so, so hard. <laughs> when, he's, when does he, you know, we all are trying very, yeah. very hard. You know, that's, please, please, shower his mercy to all of us. Yeah, that's also, um, Krishna addresses that in this chapter, the reunion. And actually it's brought up in one of, in uh, my Guru Mahesh's book called Na Pariyaham, which means uh, I cannot pay you. So mm -hmm. the gopis are accusing Krishna of being a guru druk, of being not reciprocating with the love, you know. That's not, right. Yeah. Not. But actually, what what Krishna's doing is Krishna's um, doing the internal work to bring you to uncontaminated eternal love, and it's really nicely described in uh, Napariyaham where Krishna actually described how his tears are coming from his eyes because he's being accused of not being loving. But what he's doing is loving. He's standing back and he's making us more like the gopis, making them more absorbed in him. So Krishna said, and it describes how this is the price I have to pay for the love of my jivas. They accuse me of being cold hearted. They accuse me of this. They accuse me of that. He's got tears coming from his eyes. So and this is what, yeah, he said, this is what I have to go through to get the love of the jiva. So it's nicely described there. No prayer So this book, is it uh, um, by Shiva Maharaj or is it old yeah. one or is it a new one? It's one of the earlier ones in the Krishna Mandavan series called No Pariyaham. And it's okay. all about the discussion of the gopis and their accusations of Krishna. Okay. And Krishna's okay. answers, answers of love, you know. Yeah, love is a very uh, wonderful principle and it's a very wonderful dynamic. So Lord is, Prabhu, can I ask, Lord is waiting uh, to see that we cry for him. That's why he said crying for Krishna, you know, that uh, the book, meditation book so he's teaching us how to cry for him yeah 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 he's exactly doing that how we we should as as we um he said um gogovinda march he said we've opened a crying school mm. and that's yeah. when krishna and, and that's when krishna can't resist when he sees mm. them and that's what he's yeah and that's the point we have to come to where we're really mm crying for Krishna's grace and mercy. And, and so not the, it's not a material thing as well. It's not as if all day we're walking around, we're in a supermarket, we're crying. And <laughs> we're on the train, we're sobbing and crying. It's not, it's the, it's the internal 
hankering of the heart for Krishna's grace, which may not be seen externally. Mm. In your heart, you're always hankering and wanting Krishna's grace and mercy. And that comes, and that brings you to the point that there's nothing in this material world for you apart from that grace and mercy of Krishna. Not from a kinchana, from a kinchana gotra. There's nothing left for you in this material world. The only thing that's keeping you alive is the hope for Krishna's grace. Um, so that yeah. it's not like you were crying all day, you know. <laughs> it's not. It's again. It's not something material. So yeah. It's a viraha bhav, basically. Viraha that's bhav, yeah. So devotees will. I mean, devotees will cry. Yeah. Like they will cry in private. Mm. That's another principle as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so Krishna, yeah. So when he hears things like that, as Suniti Priya is accusing Krishna, it's not fair. Then Krishna starts crying. <laughs> mm. Krishna's crying. Just see. You know. Yeah, but we can't see him crying. He can see us. You know. We are just. Anchoring, we are longing for, or oh, you know, that his love, that he shower his mercy in that way. The Baba Bhakti yeah. uh, appears, and then Prema. We all are longing for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also, it's a you know, nice discussion we're having. But it also brings up a point of view is that we should learn to be grateful for what we have received as, as, as well. Mm. As a devotee, yeah, I agree yeah, with you. We yeah. have received yeah. so much should, grace, yeah. so much mercy. Mm. But, mercy, yeah. But devote, but the principle of bhakti is that you can never get enough of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. One a, more and more. Yeah, it's never ending. The more you get, the more you want. Never satisfied. That, that will be there eternally. That's love, isn't it, for Krishna? Yeah. So, so because then that brings in, in other words, that brings, it may be material contamination there if you feel resentment. Then there's something, then, no, if you think, but we should be grateful for what we have got. We, we, by the grace of Krishna, he's arranged that we came in contact with the Guru Parampara. He's arranged by Krishna's grace. We've got the spiritual master. By Krishna's grace, we've been given the holy name. We have the association of devotees. And we have Prashadam. We have Srimad Bhagavatam. So and much. Murli Prabhu is giving us a class as well. It's Krishna's mercy. What you're doing. Oh, yeah, so well, all well, the way. Right, books. Yeah, it's Krishna's mm. books. Appreciating. Yeah. yeah, so we're not devoid of mercy completely. But what happens is we become hungry fellows. We want more of it. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhu, Why not? I, to, I want to ask something Prabhu. Yeah, please. Prabhu Bindra Mangala Thakur, how that big, he, he said, Prajip, you know, this, where we chant this, uh, we sing this uh, Ashtakam, uh, okay. and uh, there he's saying, I, uh, you are in my heart, it's a prison, my, in my steel heart. You are inside. I won't allow you to come out. So, but how did? Is that the reason that uh, he was caught, and Krishna couldn't? Krishna comes and uh, serve him. So, how can you explain that with what you are saying at this moment, Prabhu? Well, I think um, what you're describing there, um, there's a prayer by Bhagwan Mangala Thakur where he yeah. very poetically, beautifully described. Krishna would, you know, he, he was blind. Hmm. Then Krishna would come and take him by the hand. Hmm. And, and I think he would supply him drinks and things like that. And at one point, hmm. it, it became understood by Bhuva Mangala Thakur that that was Krishna. Hmm. And when he, understood, when he understood that, he tried to grab Krishna. Hmm. But Krishna just backed off. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Then he said, and then, and the, but but in his in his mood of love, mm. Baba and Prema, he he had captured Krishna in his heart. Mm. So he said, "Okay, Krishna, you may go away from me, say physically, but yeah. I'll, you're in my heart. You're in heart, and yeah. and you will be locked up there yeah. in my heart, and and you can't get away from my yeah. Heart. So, <laughs> so that's love. That's an expression of love." 
Yeah. Which would, mm. yeah, which is, yeah, I'm wondering. if we're trying to imitate that in the in the material world, but so that's the Dhruva Mangala Thakur, yeah, that was his, yeah, you cannot, Krishna, you cannot escape me. You're in my heart. It's a beautiful, just beautiful uh, poem, you know? Yes, that's the best, best of all. Yeah. But anyway, I, I prepared about, because uh, we're up on the slides. Normally, I now I'm, all the slides I've done, they're simple slides, but um, now you've caught up with the slides on that. So I did about 10 slides today, but we only got to one slide, <laughs> couple of slides. <laughs> that's good for me. It's good. Anyway, that's a good um, discussion on what this whole topic is about, actually. You can see how deep it can get, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Once you once you go into a subject, it's like when you go into it, you find more. And that's the wonders of devotion. But the more you look into it, the more you look into the jewels of devotion, the more wonders you find, you know. It's, it's like unlimited. But with the five minutes left, what should we do? Should we just continue reading a bit more? Why not? Let's go read for just to keep get us back on track of where we left. We left yeah. yeah. So someone would like to read out there. I can't see any hands. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go Having ahead. heard the conclusions of the Acharyas and Shastra, the reader may be satisfied, yet still have some questions about the definition of sadhana. After all, this is not an easy topic. But for one serious about practicing devotional service, it is an indispensable one. Accepting that bhava is not created, but rather lies torment in all living entities. Can we say that sadhana develops and cultivates bhava from an imperfect to a perfect state? This question is relevant because it shines light on the nature of the goal of sadhana and how it is acquired. We answer, Rupa Goswami discounts every possibility that bhava is anything but perfect, eternally perfect. He says, Nitta Siddhasya Bhavasya Prakatyam Hridi Sadhyata. Sadhyata. The awakening of this eternal devotion, bhava, is the potentiality of the devotional service in practice. Sadhana bhakti is neither the cause nor the refiner of bhava. Rather, it awakens something that is already perfect and complete. In the same way, ministers awaken their king in the morning. The awakening process has nothing to do with the king's long-standing monarchical competence. A reader may interject, how can you say bhava is not refined when we see that bhava sadhakas experience development in their Krishna consciousness as they gain further entrance into the realm of love? To this competent question, we reply, to understand the answer, let us revisit Srila Prabhupada's analogy of a child awakening to his walking potential. The walking ability is awakened by practice, but once a child can walk, he or she can develop almost endless varieties of walking, like strolling, jogging, running, each to a different stage of perfection. Similarly, while bhava is awakened by sadhana, one, once it is, the devotee enters into the realm of transcendence, wherein devotional activities propel him forward through stages of ecstatic devotion, on to Prema, and to what Chakravarti Thakura calls further stages of ever-increasing love. Thus, what happens to be development in transcendence is actually a devotee's progress through the eternal stages of ecstasy and love, a progress that takes place by divine grace. For further clarification on the characteristics that actually distinguish the process from its attainment, another question arises. Activities like Nam Sankirtana or Archana, when accomplished either in sadhana or in bhava, appear the same. What then is the actual difference between the two? That's the intelligent question is. Yeah. Stop there, Mother Sacheri, and um, we've got just about two minutes left. So then, then we go on to another uh, part, another section, another question is brought up. But any um, reflections on this or questions? 
I really like the, you know, where Mara said that uh, when a child's walking and then as he develops, he can do jogging, running, jumping, yeah. all is contained in that um, um, walking. The first thing is walking. So saying bhav, uh, bhav, uh, devotion, bhav, is a, a lot is contained in there. You will just like uh, go differently yeah. when you come to that. Yeah. Kind of, it made a lot of sense to me. Yeah, very nice. That's good. Because um, what's brought up is that you see that devotees do go because there is different. I mean, in Baba, I mean, the next chapter is dedicated, is actually entitled The Appearance of Baba. And there's, and devotees go through a, um, like, a stages, like, seems to go from one stage to the next. So it seems to be like, seems to be a, seems to be a mechanical principle, but it's not. It's naming the spiritual principle of the development of love, yeah, which manifests in many wonderful ways. But sometimes names are given to the different developments of bhava, but it's just names for the for the different spiritual emotions. It's not something again. It's not something uh, mechanical or materialistic. So yeah. Anyway, wonderful uh, discussion. It's seven o'clock there. So sorry about the um, technical issues in the beginning. I don't know. I'm going to have to try and work out how I'm going to get both recordings on one recording. You know, I'll try and work that out. But thank you, everyone. Thank wonderful, you. uplifting discussion. Thank you, Murli And we continue. Let me put move my bookmarker before I forget to do. And tomorrow we're reading. We're doing the last chapter of Sankar Bhakti. No, we're doing through the Bhakti Yeah. So we will probably, I'm planning to, yeah, we will definitely complete the last, the last chapter, chapter on the philosophy. And then that will leave us with reading that story that I mentioned quite a few times. Haribo. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. I have a small message, Prabhu, please. Uh, Jagannath Priya uh, Mataji said she's waiting to hear from you. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I will okay. reply to that message. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay. He's great. Muli Prabhu. Ki. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.